Hello. <laughs> well, uh, it's uh, a big honor to be here, and uh, and actually to be the first person from Brazil to talk here. My name is Caroline Reis, if you want to pronounce it in, in Portuguese, but uh, I accept uh, variables. Actually, Reis means rice or travel in your language, right? So, um, in my language, it means kings. <laughs> King, yeah. Well, I am an obstetrician, and uh, uh, when Antonia asked me, asked me to, to talk here, I told her, well, the last time I made any kind of research, I was doing it about... Mm, premature menopause, but <laughs> uh, I'm uh, very interested in the theme of uh, uh, ele electronic fetal monitoring, and I would like to share with you, so since it's the, the first time we, we go to Brazil here, uh, I will share you, uh, with you a little bit about our reality and how we deal with uh, CTG. Uh, I work, uh, I am, um, I have a master's degree in women's health. Uh, I work in this hospital called Sofia Feldman, which is the biggest maternity in Brazil. We have around 10,000 deliveries per year. Uh, I was a fellow at St. George's Hospital. I've worked in Afghanistan and they don't have CTG there. Um, and I founded the Brazilian Network of Studies of Infetal Surveillance with a colleague of mine, uh, in, which also works at Sophia Feldman. And now we have a WhatsApp group with more than 1,000 people. So I will send that link in to, to my friends at the WhatsApp group, and I hope they will get a lot of responses from Brazil. Well, Belo Horizonte is the city where I live, so I put it on the map. You can see here where Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo is. It's close to them, it's around 600 kilometers from uh, either of the cities. It's a nine hour bus ride or a 50 minutes flight. This is a picture of the hospital where I work. It's um, only a maternity ward uh, where everything happens. It was built by community efforts uh, at the end of the 70s. And it's a philanthropic institution uh, founded by our national health system. Actually, sometimes resources are not enough to cover expensive. We have some kind of uh, funding by JICA Association from Japan, but uh, it's our national health system. And our in bigger inspiration was NHS and uh, midwifery-based uh, uh, obstetric care. So. Uh, Every day they're born around 20 to 30 babies and we have like three, three consultants and uh, lots of midwives. It's not a common form of uh, work in Brazil. We are very uh, medical centered. Actually, this might <laughs> explain <laughs> our extremely high cesarean uh, section rates but actually it's a really complex problem we have there. Well, these are some data about our unit. I will not take a lot of time here. We have to, uh, at, inside the hospital we have one birthing center, but more connected to the obstetricians, but still led to from, for the midwives, but uh, we have a natural birth center uh, beside the hospital. And uh, these are our quality indications between episiotomy, which is 1%, analgesia, 31%. And this actually is one of the best uh, scenarios regarding analgesia uh, in Brazil. We have several maternities with no option of uh, birth uh, analgesia. Well, um, ah, sorry, that was too. F These are our Robinson classification of, well, 
cesarean sections. I don't think that's so much of interest of you, but our C-section rate is 32%, which is in the bottom of this <laughs> big table. Um, they have been rising. Our pre-MIP C-sections are in the dark blue, so they're not that bad. But we also receive patients from all over the state of Minas Gerais, and we have a lot of high-risk uh, pregnancies there. This is the, our most common uh, CTG, and we, we do some pH to analysis of the, the, the blood gases, but, um, well, we also have some computerized uh, CTG too, but in general we kind of ignore the thing that is written, uh, we just ignore it. Um, well, I did uh, informal research between my colleagues in Brazil, since we have a, a group in WhatsApp with uh, more than a thousand people, and I asked them to tell me how their reality was. Uh, and we use the one centimeter per, per minute. Okay, guys? Uh, <laughs> and uh, we need to save paper. You didn't think about that in the US. That doesn't make sense. Okay. So uh, it's a very medical centered uh, assistance. So it means sometimes midwives are kind of restricted to do any kind of uh, uh, interpretation for the CTGs. And uh, exclusively in hospitals, we, we have like 54% of the CTGs are made exclusively in hospitals, but there are some outpatient clinics with a uh, biophysical profile and CTG, and they do it in clinics. Also, in the, uh, mainly in the ultrasound clinics, that happens in Sao Paulo, which is a little bit more medicalized uh, center. And there are some patients like private practice or something, they, they take CTGs into people's homes just to, to monitor the beginning of the labor, which I think it's kind of weird. Um, but uh, our main issues are, we don't have any protocols for CTG in the institutions. We, there are so many options, <laughs> but sometimes they use they don't use anything. And there is a very heterogeneous interpretations of the test. And they don't, uh, the uh, obstetricians and midwives don't, don't feel like 100% prepared to interpret the CTG. I think I, maybe I would go with this one too. Uh, and sometimes it's very hard to interpret it. But uh, my personal project is to make professionals' life easier, and uh, since I'm introducing myself and also inviting you as a very, well, promising place with so many births, deliveries, and also high-risk pregnancies. Um, I have, I was in inspired by, like, in, in the UK, people really like these cards to help uh, with uh, decision-making. Um, so I did some from, for this CTG tables that we use for visual analysis. And I also developed some 3D model for uh, external cephalic version to put uh, with the Lardo uh, already existing model. And I created some mnemonics about uh, verticalized uh, breach delivery and I'm, I also translated it to English, but I'm some fixing some letters. And also, uh, I invented a, a mnemonic about CTG interpretation called the serenidade, which is serenity, which I think matches our feeling that we want to feel when we are interpreting some CTG. <laughs> and sometimes that is not what happens in the reality. Well, we are... Oh, in our group with the national net of um, mo fetal monitoring, we, have we did some online free uh, classes to discuss some themes. This, this is my YouTube channel, and uh, these are some themes that we have discussed so far. We have a massive flood in the south of Brazil. I don't know if you heard this. And we raised some money for them, like through some... Uh, solidarity classes. 
I just felt like this we are, we are the world so we are the world and it was really nice but it was not a lot of money and these <laughs> this is a very nice picture um, actually in Brazil people just do 20 minute CTGs and that's enough and they then they, they forget about the, the patient uh, that's some sometimes it's very concerning because uh, if you have a complex or a complicated CTG, you should keep monitoring this person. And uh, actually, we have a problem of overusing CTG in antenatal patients, low risk uh, for everyone and with really weird false positives just uh, uh, justify <laughs> more C-sections. <laughs> versus not following up with uh, uh, weird CTGs, not normal, suspicious, pathological. And this is something that in Brazil generally we don't see like very long uh, fetal monitoring. It generally becomes a C-section like in this point. Um, but yes, we are here to change it and maybe do something different. So come to Brazil. This is my email, which is also my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs>